Cholet Pé de la Loire has caused a lot of controversy recently due to the sprint in which Elia Viviani won for the first time in 18 months. And no, that's not the reason why. It's because of Nasser Bahani's behaviour towards Jake Stewart. Now, we're going to watch it in full speed first of all, and then we're going to get back and have a little analysis afterwards. Okay, so we're coming in towards the final. Um, so if we watch, well, hopefully you can see my mouse. Uh, Nasu Bahani is sitting in a sort of fifth, sixth wheel around here. Uh, Jake Stewart's just there on the left following Viviani. Uh, and he realizes, oh, hang on a minute, actually, I want to get onto Bahani's wheel. So he's now just swapped the sitting back, realizes that Viviani, you know, there's only one man in front of him. So he's hopping here. He has a little scrap with Bahani to try and get his lead out man. Bahani says no. Then they have another little thing and almost, you know, a little wobble there. Then chops across the road to the left. Viviani starts to go. Bahani decides, actually, I want his wheel. And just wax Jake Stewart into the barriers. Now, I'm gonna slow this down. We're gonna watch it, um, you know, just bit by bit, and we're gonna talk about each of the dodgy little moves because I don't think Jake Stewart like has done nothing wrong, but hasn't done much uh, wrong either. So if we look sort of here, uh, you can see Jake Stewart's ahead of him. This is his lead out man. So you think, to be honest, Jake Stewart is probably not gonna be able to get his wheel. Um, and when we play it again here, it's like Bahani's actually moves away. His lead out man chops to the left. So here, Jake, Jake Stewart probably does have his handlebars in front. Probably should really get the wheel. Um, and then he basically ends up stopping here. Bahani gun comes past and gives him a shove. I don't think there's too much untowards here, to be honest. I mean, maybe Jake Stewart was a, um, annoyed Bahani by, um, by sort of trying to get his lead out man. But I guess this is the point here. If we actually look behind, it's pretty it's pretty sketchy for this B&B guy and Azure Deserve bloke. Um, they're not really, um, I mean, they're about to get chopped because Viviani's now like, oh, I don't have a lead out man anymore. Uh, and sees Bahani's lead out man ahead of him. He's like, all right, hop on that wheel. Um, so here, actually, the, the lead out man, I don't understand why he went all the way across. There may have been a crosswind, but it doesn't really make sense why he'd have Bahani on his wheel and then chop across where Viviani is. Well, if you'd stay on the other side, Viviani had to, would have had to come across and it would have been a lot harder. Uh, but that's sort of irrelevant, I guess, for the legality of what the sprint was like. So here, Bahani's like sort of swerves, like looks like he's about to set up. He's now on the wrong side. Like his wheel is ahead of his lead out man's wheel, which is stupid. Shouldn't really d have done that. Um, considering that Viviani's to his left, surely wants to follow him, sit in his wheel and draft off. But anyway, Jake Stewart's actually in the perfect position here in order to follow him. Because you'd expect that when Viviani goes, Jake Stewart will be able to accelerate into his hill. Be, his handlebars will be past his and Bahani will have no chance. But instead here, when Viviani starts to go now, Bahani must realise, must see it just in the corner of his eye. Like he's like, oh, I need to go. So just goes there and like, so here, okay, fair enough. They move to the left. You know, it is what it is. Um, we'll, we'll go back a second because I think um, you'll be able to see better here. Like Bahani moves across here and from this point onwards, I mean, Buhani is the option to go straight. There is a gap. Um, like, there's two people can fit there because you assume his lead-out man's going to lose to the right or that you could just say to his lead-out man, oh, this is probably pretty quick, so I probably can't say it. But you know what I mean? Like, there's space here. Um, if he goes straight, but, uh, Jake Stewart's still got space on the barriers. But that's not what happens. Buhani moves left again, which doesn't make any sense because, like, okay, he, I know he wants Viviani's wheel, but surely he should go forward and then... And then this part here, he then just like, I just don't get what he's doing. Like he's sprinting. You can see he's slightly off balance and just like pushes Jake Stewart even more into the barrier. Now, the question is, does the barrier actually come out? Um, if we look at the sort of thing, it does look like it slightly comes out, but I don't think that's really an excuse for Bahani. You can see here, if the barrier is actually the same level all the way, uh, he would have definitely crashed. Um, but with 100 meters to go, like I don't really understand how Bahani thinks he's going to get away with this. Um, after having, after seeing what had happened to Groenewegen, you're like, no chance you're going to get away with this. Groenewegen got a nine-month ban. Like, I'll get into the punishment in a minute. But yeah, and then he chops him there. Jake Stewart does pretty well to like lean into the barrier and hold it up because that's pretty decent. And then Bahani's sprinting. But if again, if you watch, if you watch the man there, there's clearly enough space for two people if he hadn't have just chopped him all the way to the left. So, yeah, I think it's quite obvious from that footage that Nasi Bahani is at fault 100%. So now you've got to just think punishment. Okay, I assume he got relegated and all the rest of it, but that's not big enough. As I said before, my Hershey video, um, where Hershey one um, got chopped by Alaphilippe. 
and it was like pretty bad. And I was thinking, you know, I said there, if you don't ban, if you just relegate them, it doesn't do anything because there's incentives there because you're not, if they don't chop them, they're not going to win anyway. So it's like you either do it and get away with it and you win or you don't and you don't get away with it, uh, but you've done it and you still don't win. And if you didn't chop them, you still wouldn't win. So it's the same thing. You're not going to win both times. So the only way you've got to do it is you've got to ban people, which is what they did with Groenewegen, which I think was good. Maybe slightly too long, but they did ban him. So I think Buhani, like three months probably, it's quite a long time. I, I don't know. I don't think you need to go that extreme. People hate Buhani. So maybe I think that's you know going to change people's opinions. I think if it was someone nicer, um, if it was a little English rider or Australian rider who have all the all cycling tips like because they're a bit Indian, like, you know, if that was Lachlan Morton, they'd be like, oh, no, chill, mate. Like, no, it shouldn't get banned because they all love him. But if it was like someone they hate, a.k.a. Buhani, then obviously they want a really big ban. If we look at it objectively, I think a month or two is probably like reasonable. And then that was just set a precedent where you're like, okay, fair enough. Like, that's what's going to have to happen. Because it's not like, obviously, the months do slightly depend on the season. Like, he probably will be able to race the tour, for instance. But having said that, a month or two on the preparation, like, you know, he'll miss a lot of races. And especially for a sprinter, like, it's not like a GC guy where you can just sort of do it and train. Like, you really need to race. So I think that would be a pretty big hit. So I'd say a month or two. I think anyone saying three months just hates Barney personally. I don't think there's any point banning him for that long. It just seems quite uh, crazy that because he'd be like the first one to get a really big ban when realistically it's like people have done probably worse and got a really big ban. And I don't think having a really big ban means anything. I feel like once you have a ban, the length of it isn't too crazy. Like, isn't it? If he has a month or three months, like once he's got the punishment, I think people will just be like, okay, we won't do that again. So anyway, those are my thoughts uh, about the Bahani Jake Stewart incident. Uh, and I think, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, I feel very sorry for Jake Stewart. He probably would have had a good result, um, but it's just because he stayed up, stayed upright, didn't deck it. Uh, so luckily for everyone involved, they'll live to, uh, well, they can all race again. It's all chill, like nothing really bad happened. Um, so yeah, anyway, just watching. Hope you enjoy. See you in the next one. See you.